Plotner sent mainland agencies and their planes on the spot, but they couldn't land, and only Bill Mollison knew the exact location of the monster. Journey's end, and the hump of the sea monster rises above the sand. This was how it looked from our seaplane, which kept a watchful eye on the party. A long arrow drawn on the beach points to the monster's resting place, and Vern Reed is told that petrol awaits him at the hut at the mouth of the pine. From the air, you can get some idea of the immensity of the depth of the beach and its endless length. Bringing back specimens was quite a job. The toughened hide of the monster would only yield to the axe. Seabirds had worried the carcass, making little or no effect on it. And when cut, the flesh gave off a pungent odor, similar to ammonia or an overripe cheese. The monster caused so much interest that CSIRO officers were later flown in by helicopter. They brought out specimens and after tests announced they were of the opinion that the monster was whale blubber, but in some quarters the controversy still exists. Bill Mollison is of the opinion that there's been a great molecular change in the monster during the two years it's been lying on the beach. An unusual feature was hair on the hide. collected, the party started for home.